It's a boring format, so let's go ahead and talk about ban list implications. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroyed the ever-living boo-boo brown stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1400 ladder. I really do appreciate all the support. Thank you so much for all the support on my previous video where I talked about Yu-Gi-Oh! has never been worse. Um, maybe I was just riding the algorithm there, but it's got a lot of views, over 400 at this point. So I really appreciate all of the love and support on that video. Be sure to check it out if you haven't already, and subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Even though a format is boring, something that I always enjoy talking about is banless predictions and banless thoughts, things that I think should happen. Obviously, trying to predict what Konami will do is just practically impossible, but to talk about things that I think should happen to make the format better... I think goes a long way. So let's go ahead and just discuss it, shall we? So starting off here, let me get Bonfire and all that on out the way. Um, I know there's a lot of cards here. We're going to go through them one by one and, and talk about it. So just, you know, bear with me here before you get angry because I hit maybe your favorite card being Skill Drain or something. Let's just go through it one by one, right? So starting off, original Sinful Spoils to be banned. Now, I'm sure some people are going to be like, Avery, this isn't hitting any of the Snake Eye cards, even though we've got Flamberge and Promethean on here. And I've got them on here because Konami could go about hitting this deck in a few different ways, or just do all of this all together. Quite honestly, I'm hoping for like a Scorched Earth type of balance, like we saw with Tear Element, where uh, Hothenis, Sharon, and Murley all went to one on the same ban list. Um, I want to see Snake Eyes absolutely dominated. So these are like things I would love to see, right? And starting off with original Sinful Spoils is great, because now if you go Summon Snake Eye Ash, go into Poplar, outside of Temple, what is Poplar getting you going first? Dramatic Snake Eye Chase? Like, okay, it places either Black Witch or Snake Eye's Diabell Star in the back row. That doesn't progress your game state in any way. Whereas OSS gets all of your plays going, whether it's you open it, you set it off a of Black Witch, whatever the case may be, this card's absolutely insane. So... Just banning OSS does a lot, and I think that if Konami wants to keep Snake Eyes totally playable with everything at 3, I think at the very least they can ban OSS, and it helps clean up a lot of issues that we have with Snake Eyes as a whole. Do I think other things should be hit? Yes, and we're going to talk about those, but if all they did was ban OSS, that actually does help with a lot of things. You can't go into your Ponics. You can't even get the Banishing effect to... What, what is the Banishing effect? Hardly ever comes up. Um, target a Snake Eye or Dio Bellstar monster in your graveyard, add a level 1 fire from deck to hand, and then place the targeted monster on the bottom of the deck. So instead of being able to summon a level 1, you just add a level 1. So you can like add Poplar to summon it. This doesn't lock you into anything. None of the Snake Eyes lock you into anything. Promethean Princess locks you into fire, but that's not going to be relevant come Infinite Forbidden, and we'll talk about that. Um, so it, it's like, this stuff doesn't lock you into anything, and that's really a big issue that Yu-Gi-Oh! has, even going into Infinite Forbidden, when you look at the Fiendsmith cards especially, these cards don't lock you into anything, they're not negating effects, like OSS doesn't negate the effects of level 1 fire it summons, the Snake Eye monsters don't lock you into fire, Promethean locks you into fire, but you don't care because you're playing nothing but fires, the Fiendsmith stuff doesn't lock you into Fiends, they have the Fiendsmith Sanctus Quick Play spell, which is basically just Hornet Drones 2.0, that locks you into only attacking with Fiends for the turn, but if you're going first, then you don't care, so it's like, we're going to end up with good stuff dot decks, like based, aka as I called it back then, badass sexy engine decks, all over again, like 60 card piles and stuff, just because of the fact that none of these cards lock you in anything. The cash tier cards don't lock you in anything. So anyway, all that being said, OSS needs to be banned. Along with that, I think that Flamberge and Promethean Princess should also be banned. Flamberge is a fire dragon, so... In some crazy world, you could also play this in Tempai, or like if you have the Sangin summoning up, you can use Haida to reborn Flamberge Dragon. If you have Sangin summoning up, then this Flamberge becomes unaffected by the opponent's activated effects in your main phase one. That's actually kind of crazy. On top of that, again, it doesn't lock you in anything. So this went from being a meh card to once we got Phantom Nightmare, this card became absolutely insane. It just became a custom card overnight, especially with um, the release of Poplar, like I said, in uh, Phantom Nightmare. And so, being able to link off of this into a Masquerina, this gets you the two bodies being either Oak or Ash and Poplar. Uh, it, th this card's insane. Being able to put an opponent's monster in the back row, it's like a Subversion Snake Eye. It, I don't need to explain how broken this card is. Y'all have seen how busted it is. Along with that, I think Promethean Princess is also another custom card. It requires two plus effect monsters, so it's completely generic to reborn any fire monster from your grave. Locks you into only summoning fires, but here's the important thing, though, that I mentioned earlier. 
when we get the Fiendsmith cards, we have the new Fiendsmith fusion, the uh, Die Iris, or whatever it's called. Uh, here we go. Yeah, the Fiendsmith Die Iris. I, I want to read you this card real quick. Um, quick effect, you can negate the effects of a number of face-up cards on the field up to the total link ratings of the link monsters equipped to this card until the end of this turn. So you can get this card out, use the effect of Requiem to equip it from your field or grave to a monster. So you can equip it to the Die Eye Ray and then use Die Eye Ray's effect to negate your own Promethean Princess so that you're not firelocked. That is insane and that is an interaction that shouldn't even fucking exist. Of post infinite forbidden once we get a new balance. So I think just taking Flambridge and Promethean out back and shot in the nuts is going to make uh, Snake Eyes so less threatening and make fire decks in general less threatening and less viable. We've dealt with fire decks in general long enough, whether it's Salamangrate with Snake Eye cards and they're FTKing with the spiritual fire art, whether it's Volcanic FTK with 60 cards, same goes for Salad with 60 cards. Uh, th these cards need to be taken care of. So moving on from that, I think that stuff's pretty obvious. I just wanted to mention that interaction. Uh, moving on here, I've been saying this for a few formats now, a uh, few balance discussions now at this point. I'm sure all, a lot of the new subscribers are going to be confused. Um, and uh, I've been saying this for a few formats now because I think it's actually something that could happen at some point, whether it's a month, a year, five years down the line. I think terraforming should be banned. I saw this a while back, and I say this every time too. I saw this a while back on a TCG Player article. I forget who the writer was, maybe like Zach Butler. But terraforming, I feel, needs to be banned because when you sit back and think about it, how many decks, or really I should say how many archetypes, because Yu-Gi-Oh is just so archetype-based now, how many archetypes have a field spell? Hell, how many archetypes have multiple field spells? Look at Mana Diem. Uh, Visa Starfrost gets a new field spell every time he goes to a different planet, going to the local Kmart there. Like, what the hell? Like, they've got, like, what, five field spells? And you mean to tell me that terraforming just acts as an additional copy for all of them? You put Runic Fountain to two, the deck is still playing three copies because of terraforming. So you're giving every deck in the game... Three, if their field spell semi-limited like Fountain, or four, in the case of pretty much every other field spell in the game, four copies of their field spell, and in a 40-card deck, that's pretty good odds, and it helps the consistency of every deck in general. There's no deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! I can think off the top of my head, archetype-wise, that doesn't have some kind of field spell. Even if the field spell is liquid ass, you know, what if they get new support and all of a sudden the field spell is just suddenly a god card now, right? So by eliminating terraforming as a whole, you eliminate every deck in the game to have potentially a fourth copy of their field spell, which thus provides more consistency. Plus, so many archetypes now have ways to search in archetype cards, which can sometimes include the field spell if they, you know, include the name of the archetype. Like, for example, if Kashtira's field spell said, I don't know, instead of Pressured Planet, it said Kashtira Planet Race Off, then it immediately becomes searchable. So it's like, you know, yeah, they can balance it that way, but, you know, then they could make the searcher of the archetype say, add a card that mentions insert archetype name here in its text. So then you can still search the field spell anyway. So I feel like Terraforming is just such a good card that it's it's from a time in Yu-Gi-Oh! where field spells, I think, were very different, and I think it's time to just get rid of it. Next up here is Skill Drain, and I'm, I didn't want to put them all in this list because I think that this just all generically applies. Anti-Spell, TC Boo, Rivalry Goes, and Skill Drain itself, all of these floodgates need to be banned. Uh, Konami has already shown them they don't want to deal with it in the form of Summon Limit, and of course Mystic Mine a few years ago. The Skill Drain went from banned to 1 to 3. I think it's time that we put this card... Either back at one or we just ban it outright. I mean, we're even seeing meta decks now like Snake Eyes uh, and to a lesser extent Labyrinth and other decks being able to side deck in Skill Drain. And I feel that this is similar to like Mystic Mine where, you know, you had the Mystic Mine burn decks and whatever playing Mystic Mine and that was like their win condition. But then once all the other meta decks like Sprite and Tear to a lesser extent, whatever, start playing Mystic Mine just to be able to stop the game until they could draw to their outs or combo pieces, whatever, uh, then we saw it get banned. And of course, it just it doesn't provide for good gameplay, especially on stream. Like I thought it was hilarious that Chris LeBlanc tried to use Skill Drain, his opponent used Cross Out and called Skill Drain. Now, is that a healthy interaction? No, I would argue it's not. That shouldn't even be a thing. I think that Skill Drain just needs to go back to being banned. It's just such a one-sided card, especially since if OSS is still legal, you can just OSS away the Skill Drain, your effects are back online. Um, next up, being banned, Dimension Shifter. I don't think that this needs explanation. It's an FTK card. Let's just be honest here. This is the one hand trap I will argue until the cows come home. Needs to be hit in some way. Maybe even Ash to a lesser extent. Like, put Ash maybe to two or to one at some point. I think it was at two for a while in the OCG. 
Uh, moving on here to the limits. We've got Bonfire. This is a Rota for Fire decks. I, I don't think I need to say more. It's limited to one activation per turn. Still triples up as just more copies of your Pyro Monsters. Next up is Wanted. Just going off of more um, hits to Snake Eyes. It is currently at two in the OCG, but OCG has weird ways of hitting cards. I think we just need to put this to one. Uh, to just hit Snake Eyes even more. Same with Poplar. I think we need to put this to one. Putting it to two really does nothing. I would like to see Snake Eyes Ash go to two or to one, ideally one. With it being an ulti and a new OTS pack, I don't think it's going to get hit. But it's something I at least wanted to mention anyway. Um, next up here is Runic Tip. I've been saying this for a while too. Runic Tip is literally a blank card in every Runic deck ever. And I think moving forward, especially with Infinite Forbidden and the White Forest archetype, you can play White Forest Runic. Uh, you basically take out all the Biseal cards that Joshua Schmidt was playing, and you play White Forest cards. And Runic Tip just helps facilitate Runic plays, and just uh, triples up, really, since you're playing three copies. Triples up as any of the other Runic spells that you want to see. And I just don't think that that's really healthy. I think these rota s cards that can just become anything you want need to be toned down like if if rota's at one then why do we have bonfire and tip at three it doesn't make any sense to me so i, I that that's my reasoning for that i've been saying that for a while uh, pot of prosperity i think needs to go to one it provides so much consistency this is a hit to tempi really any deck that can play prosperity uh tempi can otk through prosperity so they don't even care about the damage getting cut in half most other decks that play this are playing it going first anyway so cutting the damage in half is a null point um, so hitting it to one hurts consistency of decks in general, uh, and it's also one of the OCG. I think it's actually just a really smart hit. Next up here is Herald of the Orange Light. This is a hit to Melodious and to Voiceless. I think Herald, when it came off the list to three, there was really no decks that could abuse it outside of Drytron, and Drytron is Liquid Ass. Uh, but now that we have things like Melodious and Voiceless running around, I think that this card really needs to be toned back. We saw how powerful it was in Tier Element, just being able to negate any Hand Trap. I think it just makes any Fairy deck just more consistent. Plus, it's a tuner, and being able to just dump any other Fairy, usually you want those Fairies in the Grave anyway, so uh, I just think that Herald needs to go. Uh, next up here is Ostinato. Does this even need an explanation? This isn't once per turn. So like, you can Bell it, you can Ash it, but yet, if they open up multiple copies, then you're just sort of screwed anyway. But yet, you have to negate this because it provides so much just extending power. And it's just such a power card. Like, it's like not negating Snake Eye Ash. You have to negate the Snake Eye Ash or you're crapping all over the floor when your opponent builds a board. So, I, I think Ostinato, with it not being once per turn, you need to hit this to one. There's no reason why it shouldn't be around. I don't have anything to two. And I can't really see anything moving to three. I think more than anything, this ban list needs to check a lot of the things in the meta instead of worrying about pushing things to three. Um, you know, if Terra Top isn't at three, which I think that it is, um, then sure, like that can come to three. Yeah, it's already at three, so it doesn't even matter. Um, they did that, I think, more to just push like the Goblin Biker stuff, which isn't all that good anyway. The only thing that I could really see off the top of my head when I made this list coming back is like Zemmighty. Zemmighty's been banned for years, and if Konami's that worried about wind-up FTK, they could just ban Hunter. Like, I, people have been saying this for years. Like, bring back Zemmighty, give the wind-up players something to mess around with. Like, Shark and Magician have been at three for years now, and I remember Konami constantly moving Shark and Magician on and off the list between two and one and three. Uh, just bring back Zen Mighty to one, and if you're that worried about Hunter, ban Hunter or make it a hard once per turn. Um, we could maybe see Summon Sorcerers come back because of the fact that it did get the errata. But again, I'm not really too concerned about bringing things back. I more than anything want to see stuff get hit. If Konami wants to bring stuff off the balance, cool. All the more cards for us to play with and mess around with um, going into this new format and going into a post-national season with Infinite Forbidden into a fresh regional season. Um, I just, I want to see this format cleaned up. I really don't give a shit about things that come off the list because at the end of the day, things like Infinite Forbidden and all that don't matter. There's no reason to play any of the new cards unless they work in Snake Eyes because Snake Eyes is the best deck. So guys, let me know what you think about this ban list discussion. Are there cards that you want to see hit? Um, I know some people have talked about Apollosa. I really don't think Apollosa is much of an issue because normally it's 1600 attack. You can pretty much summon any body in the game and run over it, and it's not a big deal. Um, I've seen some people talk about Masquerina and Little Knight. I don't really think that those cards are much of an issue. I think it's just the fact that Snake Eye can abuse those cards in such a way that they seem just so tier zero broken. So thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video.